This is Kate Beckinsale. You're listening to Bacon Sale. Oh, Bacon Sale, oh, Bacon Sale. How silly is your fighting when Kent and Joel and Jacob yell? To some it can be frightening, but in this time of love and joy, perhaps a truce when talking toys. Oh, bacon cell, oh, bacon cell, it's time for some uniting. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah. That went really long. What what accent was that? That was a uh, Christmas singer. It was is his Bing Crosby accent. No, Bing Crosby is much more. Uh, I'm dreaming of a wine. Can we hear some Nat King so Cole? So how was that different? What, what you just did? There's was more lisp on that one. Oh, bacon sale. Oh, oh that's true. bacon that's true. sale. So it's Bing Crosby with a lisp. It's like Al he Gore. was. It's, it's a guy drinking too much wassail at the party. Ugh, Nobody welcome, likes wassail. Welcome to Bacon Sale, everyone. I'm Joel. <laughs> I'm Kent. Yeah, Jacob. I thought you were going to start. I was like, Jacob's going to say, I'm Jacob first. <laughs> I should have. It throws yeah. off the rhythm, and we uh, don't need that. Yeah, I couldn't do that. Throw off the groove. So we'd like to thank everyone for listening to the last show. Labyrinth Never Ending Story. Yes, we're sorry that we fought. The, ne- the <laughs> Never Ending Labyrinth. We're sorry that we're when your parents fight... <laughs> Because people don't, I found that people don't like it. Like, even though this is how we were, were created. This is what Bacon Cell was based on, was Kent and I going on a, a walk and me saying, no, Man of Steel is not that good. And Kent going, stop it, Joel. Stop it. And running back it's, in the office. It's exactly how it went. It was the weirdest thing. Yeah. And, but it was funny to me, like, I mean, I didn't think we even got that heated on it. It was mild heated, maybe. Yeah. yeah. For any new listeners, if you think that was heated, go back and listen to the America show. Uh, America. My, my favorite comment was. <laughs> Where Kent has literal fumes coming out of his ears. Oh. Oh, yeah. He was mad. And there's other ones where Joel, I think he might actually leave the room. Yes. Very possibly. <laughs> uh, there, so my favorite comment on Facebook, go follow us on Facebook if you don't already, was, or no, it's Twitter. Bacon Cell, the only place where, where two guys will fight over movies using synthesizer noises. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> I'm like, beep, beep, oh, yeah, Joel. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> so thank you for listening. We're sorry we fought. And we do appreciate your comments on Facebook. We do appreciate yes. your comments on Twitter. And we appreciate your iTunes reviews. Yeah. Uh, do we have a new iTunes we review? A new one I wanted to read. This Great. is from Alpa, Al, Alpaca. I can't even say it. Alpaca Attack. Alpaca Attack 12. Alpaca Attack. If you were searching for the best podcast ever. Wow. They're talking us up already. Please do yourself a favor and listen to Bacon Sale. I can't wait to listen to the new episode every Monday. And I'm always left wishing that there was a new episode every other day as well. Oh, this is Jacob that wrote this. Is it? He wants an episode every day. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. All the inside jokes that carry over throughout the episodes are great discussions that are, that have that made this podcast so funny, meta, and enjoyable to listen to. Kent and Joel and Jacob, hashtag Team Jacob. This is totally Jacob. Did you write <laughs> this? Uh, are great guys who really just enjoy entertaining the listener. Listening to the show has helped me help keep me laughing through some rough patches in life, and it will continue to be the listener as long as they continue to release episodes. Aw. Gets really touching there at the end, Jacob. Yeah. Good job on writing that. I do what I can. Hopefully we are able to release more episodes and keep your spirits up because it's our season finale next week. Next week it <gasps> is. Yeah. Yeah, we're going off the air for a bit. Uh, on December 18th will be our final episode of the season. And then we're going to take a break. Realize yes. that we miss each other. I know. And our new episode, our episode, or season, our new season, excuse me, season four. Five? Four. 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 Yeah, it's like you're crazy. Yeah, four. <laughs> I'm like five now. Season 12? Yeah. <laughs> no, our new season will start on, four is Jan- crazy enough, on the isn't it? 15th of January. So That's forever away. Yeah. Oh, We better Dad. do Facebook Lives like every day. But we'll we'll still be on social media and goofing around there. And you can always buy Bacon Cell merch at tpublic.com slash bacon cell and, and hold that at night to keep you comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a lot of complaints when we, re- we released the most recent episode because yeah, it's December. It's December. And everyone said, "What? What? Where's our Christmas episode? You guys do an entire month of Halloween. Where's Christmas? So, Jacob, what are we talking about today? Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> well Bump played. set spike. <laughs> well played. Yeah. Um, so, uh, well, Joel actually introduced it really well by saying we're going to come together in harmony. Yes. Because this episode, harmony listener, guys, ready? Here we go. In harmony. I was going with one note. Oh. Wow. <laughs> we were botched. I was deliberately going to go didn't... off. No, I was deliberately going to do something off, but then Kent was off, and I was Jacob like, Jacob well, didn't sing. Kent just started I, singing I started songs. singing a song from Little Mermaid, too. We are in sync. Woo! 
Uh, so what no. are we talking about today, Jacob? <laughs> today we're going to talk about Christmas gifts. And you yeah. guys are not going to be fighting. This is basically the antithesis of last week, right? Like, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> these guys already came up with a list of uh, 12 toys that they want to have. Which uh, Jacob did say the creation of the list probably should have been the episode because Kent and I were Yeah, it should have. We went off fun. a little bit, yes. But uh, this is actually it inspired. Totally uh, this is inspired idea from the listener. Uh, this is from uh, Mike Hilton. He said, technology in movies, you'd like to be real. Yes. And so we kind of took that, put a little Christmassy spin on it, and came up with some fun stuff. The 12 days of movie geek Christmas, maybe? 12, 12 days of geekmas? Something, Something like that. Like that. We, yeah. we decided that uh, there are a lot of cool things in movies that we would like to have for Christmas. Yes. yes. Uh, and so we came up with a list of 12 of them. For and example, a one of mine that got thrown away pretty quick. I, am I allowed to say this? Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, we were co- trying to come up with a list, and I came up with the three seashells from Demolition Man. <laughs> he did. <laughs> and then I had to explain to him how Sylvester Stallone said those probably well, we worked. We won't go into that. And it, oh, that's <laughs> right. That's but remember, right. In, in Demolition Man, if you haven't seen the movie, go watch it. It's incredible. And it it is prophetic about Taco Bell. I'll just say that. <laughs> but there is no toilet paper. There's only three seashells next to each toilet. And the, and the gag is Sylvester so Stallone's character who's new in this world doesn't understand what they do. Yes. Uh, no no one else does explained. Yeah. yeah. But we did put some limitations because obviously we could spend a whole episode talking about, I don't know, James Bond gadgets or something yeah, exactly. like that. But we decided we were only going to do one gadget or gift per franchise. Yep. So if we picked something from James Bond, which I have to say this right now, nothing from James Bond. I made the final cut. We're sorry. But say, for example, we put the laser watch on there. Yes. Then we couldn't get the saw watch or, or the, the x-ray glasses, yeah. which so, I really wanted. I'm sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why'd you look at me like that? <laughs> Hashtag pervy Kent. No, 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 no. <laughs> Creepy it's Kent. Christmas. It's Christmas, oh, cre- guys. Cre- Christmas Kent. I just want to see what's creepy in. Creepy Christmas Kent. I just want to see what I'm getting for Christmas. Yeah, we have more characters now. We can do that. Hashtag creepy Christmas Kent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, we can do whatever we want. Hashtag grumpy pants. No, no. That's a character. That's a Joel character. Is it? Yeah, you said that a lot. Oh. We're stopping hashtag wars now. We are. <laughs> because we're going to go this we're gonna start from 12 to 1, and 12 being we still want it, but 1 being we really, 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 really want it. And we're going to go ahead and trade off on who's leading the discussion as well. So I'm, You can probably tell who's going to pick, who picked him. Yeah, you're, you're going to be able to tell. So should I start off with the first one then? Let's hear it. On the 12th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. The, the listener gave to me. The, the listener gave to me. Yeah, there you go. Through a me. <laughs> Thank you very much. A picture of Kate Beckinsale. No, uh, passive dream machine. Passive. Passive. Like, as in not powered? As in active? As in not active. Like Actually, a speaker. So let me explain. So you guys may have heard me talk about a movie called Inception. Inception. No, I don't. Wait, Inception. Um, is that the one with Matthew McConaughey? And there's the fifth dimension. That yeah, is yeah, a, yeah. That is a brilliant movie as well. That's that one, right? No, it's actually it stars Jodie Foster, and she goes. <laughs> now to you're just space. confusing people. Who I know, know the right? Movie. Inception came out in 2010. Everyone should know this movie. But the passive dream machine, passive actually, it's uh, portable, automated, somnison, intravenous device. Somnison, Ken. What does somnison mean? They just wanted to make it spell passive. It's a, it's a drug. It is a drug. So you're going to kind of get drugs for Christmas as well. <laughs> Oh. Is that okay? So it'll be like last this Christmas. This is on Christmas. For me. <laughs> on Kent's list for sure. <laughs> if you're lonely this Christmas, take no, take some somnus. It's like it's like okay, Kent gets to pick this one. I want to do something from Inception, and I want drugs for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, think about it. So the passive dream machine, like we all saw. Ex- this. Explain to him uh, yeah, for those yeah, who haven't seen it. What what does it do? Okay, so it is a suitcase, right? With, I'm there, with you so far, man. Okay. There's a suitcase. <laughs> this you, is exciting stuff. Suitcases. Everyone goes to sleep, okay. and you get a little IV right in your wrist, mm-hmm. which you have to get a needle, which is pretty terrible. This is sucking so far, just so you know. Yeah, yeah. no, but don't worry. Okay. It controls your dreams, or you can control your dreams. Not only that, but it's it hooks up to multiple people. Yes. So say, for example, we had the, the passive So we machine. can all get the same diseases. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who's no, getting diseases from This isn't dirty machines. drugs. We're all, we're all sharing needles and no, stuff. No, no, it has separate little, it's like outputs. It's not like we tr- we share the needle. It's like you, they're different So we're tubes. sharing a UV, uh, no, an Jason, IV, which Jacob, is totally better. Yeah. Ba- no, ba- basically, so the dream machine's in the middle. They have a uh-huh. kind of a outputs, and then everyone gets their own separate cord. And you all plug in. But it all goes to the middle. Yeah, it all goes to the middle to the So to there's the still thing. kind of like the fluids so are still. I'm sure there's some cleaning <laughs> stuff going on there. Wow. I don't but think then, I'm into this. But then we could all dream together. So, for example, let's say I am the architect of this dream and I go, guys. Sure, he makes himself the architect. You got a couple hours? Let's, let's take a dream. Wait, so you're, you're the Ellen Page of this? 
Sure. Okay. Sure. He's on page. Yeah. I'm the architect. I'm going to be Joseph Gordon Levitt. Uh, you can be Tom. I'll be Tom Hardy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh come on! You, you made yourself the architect. You get to be Quiet. the point man in this one. Quiet, Ellen I'm, Page. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody likes you. <laughs> Draw a maze for a half hour, <laughs> and I will. Mm. So what, what? I'd be like, guys, let's go to Jurassic Park. And so I would project Jurassic Park from my memory, from the movie, or from all the drawings I did as a kid. Do you notice how none of us made ourselves Leonardo DiCaprio? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a pretty sad story. Kim would rather be Ellen Page. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, we'd all be able to go to Jurassic Park and live that. It would be living your dream. Because I think for me, the reason I really want this is I wake up some, some mornings and I go, Holy cow, that was the coolest dream. Two seconds later, it's gone, right? I've heard you talk about some of your dreams on Radio Ronin. I'd rather not be in okay, those dreams. Okay, those ones we can forget about. <laughs> those Does ones this record the- dreams, though? Uh, yeah, let's say yes. Well, because the, there was one thing it said. It said, it said yes. <clears throat> no, it said, it said memory that. backup for retention. This is one of the it listed kind of its specifications, and it says it has memory backup for retention of infusion output data, which seems to me to say it can record data from your dream. Okay. So also, I feel like and this is just me speculating, I feel like this drug gives you more control over your dream, maybe more stability. It does. Yes, because the dreams in Inception were not like any dreams I had because they were all like very linear. Mm-hmm. Whereas mine would be like, I'm in my house, although it's not my house. It's Kent's house, but it's not Kent's house because Kent is the prince of Narnia. <laughs> With goat legs. With goat legs. Yes. Are these actual dreams you're describing right now? I just had that right now while listening to his description. Oh, come on. <laughs> so here's what's funny. I looked up this, the Passive Dream Machine. Christopher Nolan, when this movie was released, he released a website which has a user and instruction manual for the Dream Machine. Oh. And it is like seriously like out of something out of Ikea. It's page by page of how to turn this on. Not page by Ellen Page, but how to turn this machine on and how to turn it off and how to properly use it and how to administer the drug. It is in depth. And I mean, it's, for example, it says like participants should be in a comfortable reclined position for infusion free from excessive light or noise. Is there Jacob, a warning? I just had, yeah, these are all warnings. I just had another dream, Jacob. It was awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's like, and it explains like multiple dream levels require a method known as a kick to awaken from a dream on a deeper level because in it, did you, you know, intravenous disease of some sort? No, well, this, no, this is a it's drug. so clean. It's this so is clean. A drug that will keep you under but it has a timer that that will automatically stop pumping and so you'll you can wake up at a certain point. but as we know if you go too far into the dreams well not only that it's addictive yes like there's a scene in inception when there's this room full of people who just don't want to wake up because they love the dream because imagine this imagine this jacob this will this will really kind of maybe sell it to you okay imagine that we were like hey guys how about we all play like a laser tag game together but instead of laser tag we go into the dream and we have one of the like a first person shooter experience, but in real life, all three of us would like being or able to jump over origins, which you care for a lot. And we could dream about that, that together game. and play together in a dream state. So basically VR. Yeah. Like a really, really cool VR. Yeah. With a vein with a needle sticking in your vein. <laughs> yeah. See, now I'm but out also, again. <laughs> but here's the problem is actually so the, the science behind this, the sites dedicated to this dream machine. It makes me feel like it is kind of real because they actually say overexposure to dream sharing. So the addiction. Like, so even when you're awake, people will be like, I've had it too much. And so the overexposure can cause someone to not dream anymore, to actually oh. lose the effect of dreams and, or at least dream unnaturally. Why did you and want to so, put this on the list then? You were selling it to me pretty hard before. It, I just think it's the coolest toy ever to be able to control your dreams it's and the remember coolest toy them. ever that can ruin your brain. Well, you just don't become addicted, right? Well, and there's also the diseases to I consider addi- here. I have a very addictive personality. Addiction, yeah. diseases. This is what Kent wants for Christmas. Also, there are... There, there are <laughs> underground Ellen Page. Under, <laughs> Stop Dang, that. I missed that part. Underground circles, <laughs> they've also utilized this dream share for entertainment purposes, such as dream cades and challenging others and creating like a first person shooter yeah. or creating dreams for leisure. Well, I mean, even just being able to go into a dream and control it and being like, I'm going to fly now. Yeah. Awesome. The coolest thing ever. Hopefully your next one doesn't have to be administered with a prescription. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's really up to Joel, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Because on the 11th day of, Christ- of Bacon Cell Christmas, the listener gave to me a point of view gun. This is from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And I think it I just was, had a dream. It was specifically created for the movie. It wasn't in the books at all, which if you guys haven't read... The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy books, they are hilarious. So hilarious. Have I you read them all? I've only read the first one. I've read two, three. I've read three. Okay. I read the first three. I hear they kind of taper off. They do. And that's because it got less uh, entertaining or maybe more I mean, absurd as it went on. You read that first book, book and it's so absurd, but it's so clever. Yes. And, and, and even this device yeah. is incredibly clever. So in the movie, this gun, uh, they take it and they shoot it at someone and it would automatically give the other person, the targets, 
they would give the target the shooter's point of view. So say we were arguing, Jacob, about, mm-hmm. I don't know, something dumb like Marnie. And I was like, no, this movie is terrible. Do you like how it's like a peaceful show and he's thrown in two insults already? But we're, say, for example, <laughs> we're, we're talking about yeah. this I'm, and I'm like, oh, Marnie's terrible. I don't like it. And you're like, no, no, I think it's really good because this you would then shoot me with the gun and I would see the movie from your point of view and be like, oh, I am terribly wrong about and everything and I'd be I've like, ever wow, said. Wow, you Marnie. have a demented mind. How did I get in here? <laughs> um, and that's, Is that how it works? And maybe I put this in here because I actually like the description of it. It says the point of view gun conveniently, conveniently does precisely as the name suggests because there's not much to it. And maybe I put this in here because it was a little more a little more serious because I feel like we could really use this today. That would kill our show, so you know. <laughs> but not even our show. But I he's just, like Zap Kent, and he's like, oh, okay. It's just amazing <laughs> to me, and th- this is maybe getting a little more serious than we intend on Bacon Cell, but it's, and I'm not going to get too specific. But it seems like there's a lot of conversations that happen today online where two people are just going at each other like they want to kill each other, but if right. they met each other in real life, they might have a different point of view. And I just feel like this would be a good gun to have for society where it's like, okay, let me see your point of view. And you may not agree with it, but at least you could see it. Talk about the listener and then the reverse listener. So yeah, if, about? if those two could just shoot each yeah. other with this gun, I think they yeah. really start to get along. So a lot, can of, I, lot of bad blood there. Do you have the history of this gun as well? Uh, it was created by a bunch of angry housewives. No, 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 no. <laughs> if I may, that's actually true. So it's created by Deep Thought, who yes. actually you know created the or found the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. So it's from a commission of the Intergalactic Consortium of Angry Housewives, who were tired yes. of ending every argument with their husbands with the phrase, "You just don't get it, do you?" And so, and this was this was formed, and this is literally a war, the Great Gender War on Planet Amazonia. Yes. So, so they it, did this to, to maintain peace. But I mean, basically. just imagine that where it's like someone is just not getting your point of view and be able to go and shoot and be like, okay, I see it now. And then we can come to a common ground yeah. because I'm seeing your point of view on this Then you issue. can start, then you can stop hating on Marnie. That'll be amazing. But I need to see if you I have a gun. You, you see it from my point of view and go, that does suck. <laughs> and if you guys saw it from my point of view, it's like, who cares? Why are we still talking about this? <laughs> <laughs> no, but here's what's great about this. And it's so clever is the gun has little effect on women as their empathy levels are already too high for the gun circuitry to modify. Now it says that. And the only reason it says that is because in the movie, can I remember her name? Zoe, Zoe Deschanel. Deschanel. Thank yes. you. She uh, she shoots, uh, I can't remember his name, Zafra Beetlebox, yes. a well bunch done. of times in order to get him to understand why she's so upset at him. And then he turns the gun around her and he's like, well, let's see how you'd like it. And she's like, won't work on me. I'm a woman. But I think that was a cop out. I think she just didn't want to be shot. Oh, okay. That's what I think. Huh. Because I think otherwise, you know, we need to see everyone's point of view. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Except for some of our followers on Twitter who are fake accounts. <laughs> right. Don't care about their point of view. Okay, so if you got this, you open this up on Christmas morning, who's the first person to use this on? I mean, not, not just <laughs> you. Jay, me? You. Okay, in what situation? Uh, <laughs> it'll probably be about wonderful Christmas time. Because <laughs> <laughs> Joel got so mad at me about liking that song. Kit said on Radio Ronin that wonderful uh-huh. Christmas time is better than most of other Beatles songs. Uh, it was hyperbole. Okay. I'm sorry. And if I could just shoot you with a gun so you could see how much that hurt me. (laughs) You two. Get a room. Yeah, Jake. (laughs) Ellen Page and Tom Hardy. Together at last. Oh, the chemistry is like fire. (laughs) So much chemistry. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, but uh, point of view gun. It's it's just an interesting gun that I thought would help the world maybe a little bit. Yeah. Heal the world. Make it a better place. For For you you and for me. The entire human race. Ow. Are you, <laughs> are you okay? I this my, show is weird. I hit my hand. All right, Kent, you're next. What is yours? Uh, you say this show is weird, and it's about to get a little bit weirder. Yes, because you put this one on here, and I was like, why? And then you explained it to me, and I went, your choice, man. Hey, just use the point of view gun. It's no big deal. <laughs> so on the 10th day of Christmas, or 10th day of Bacon Cell Christmas, the <laughs> listener gave to me a Pokeball. <laughs> Which, Bacon Cell, as you know, are huge Pokemon fans, and we know a hey, lot about it. Hey, in 2016, I played Pokemon Go for about three months, okay? <laughs> we had an entire show of someone educating us on Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, and I still don't know anything about it. But, Kent, you want to tell them why you wanted to get a Pokeball? Yeah, let's hear this. It's, it's no secret. Defend yourself, sir. It's no secret. Uh, who doesn't want a Pokeball? Come on, you well, guys. First, okay, first we should explain what a Pokeball is. First, okay. I think you're just talking about a ball that's going to poke me. So <laughs> a, a Pokeball is a, you know... You know what happens when you put it on Lady Gaga's face? Uh, no, don't. What? Don't. She sues you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> huh? What? A Pokeball. A you, non- thought was, you thought I was going to make a poker face joke, yeah. but I did. It, yeah, became, it became yeah. a non-joke. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. So a Pokeball, it's the size of a baseball or a softball, 
And when you see a pocket monster... Actually, it's the size of a golf ball when not in use. And then when you activate it, it turns into the size of a baseball. Wow. I'm so glad you know that. I looked that up. It's right when, there. When you see what? When you see a pocket monster. What's that? <laughs> Pokemon. And what are is this a, is this a dream sequence connection thing that you're talking <laughs> it, about? It could be. Yeah. Or you, but you can throw the Pokeball, which then it uh-huh. gets to the size of a softball. You throw it at the beast, mm-hmm. and then it sucks it up in, as an energy, and you can help transport it and use it to fight. A beam other of red light converts the Pokemon into energy, and then the energy goes so, to the ball. So you want an imaginary ball to catch imaginary creatures? No. No. If, this is why he wants look, it. This okay, is sure this and like this is all imaginary, right? No, but if this we're oh yeah, real. We, should, we should also. I was I forgot to say that at the beginning. I was going to say that we we put the stipulation you can only do one gadget or toy or item per franchise, but we also said they had to be reasonably sized gifts. Like yes, you couldn't choose the Death Star, a DeLorean, yeah, like something like that that you norm- wouldn't normally get. They had to be either wearable or carryable or at least reasonable sized yes. gifts. Hold in your hands, right? Yeah. And so, I, here's why I think a Pokeball, a real Pokeball would be great. Would the Doctor Who ship fit? Like, you no, put that in the house. the TARDIS would not fit. The TARDIS, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's too heavy. So, it's no secret that I don't like animals very much. I like cats okay. Are we talking eating or pets? Uh, you know, meat dogs. I like meat dogs. Because <laughs> you just eat them and they're gone. Oh, man. <laughs> meat dogs. You did that. <laughs> but if you all of a sudden, like a lot of people, they, they worry. They're like, oh, man, I have like 19 dogs. How do I travel across the country? Joel oh, knows. Someone, someone has I don't to, have 19 had, dogs. Uh, no, you just eat them. They, they're, called, <laughs> they're called children, Jake. Oh. So <laughs> Some people call their dogs children. Yeah, they do. So here's the thing. You don't have to get a dog sitter anymore. You just throw the Pokeball at your dog, and it gets sucked up into a ball, easily transported. Now you're getting somewhere. And guess what? You're like, quit barking at the neighbors. You're being so loud and annoying. You throw the Pokeball, (laughs) and it's stuck. Silence. I choose you. (laughs) (laughs) And here's the thing. It's like a genie. They're not sad in there. No, apparently Pokeballs are explained as being so incredibly comfortable for Pokemon that they would willingly enter one with Without any sort of encouragement. Yeah, exactly. It's it's meant to re- replicate a Pokemon-friendly environment for comfort and to discourage them to leave. From leaving, I should say. Right. Yes. Can I think the real best course of action for you is just not to have a dog? To begin That's what with. I was going to say. Like, Why no. do you want someone this when you is, don't have You're pets. like, the dog's barking. Are this, you no. capturing the neighbor's dogs? Yeah, probably. This is a billion... Is this for this, Oh, I love Cruz. 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 We're going to have to kill him. <laughs> this is a billion dollar idea, you guys. That sounded really weird, Kent. If people didn't listen to our zombie apocalypse show. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Guys, this, if a Pokeball was real and you could capture any animal, imagine that. Think about it. But I still want to know your practical use for it. You just explained it. No, but for him, though, what would, why is he capturing animals? Honestly? Yeah, that, I do want to know It would too. probably be because I like dogs because they're cuddlers. And it would be like... Oh, I wish there was a dog here. Oh, wait. Hold on. Burp, Whose Here's dog is ball. that, though? It's the neighbor's, maybe. <laughs> you stole the neighbor's dog? <laughs> yeah, but it's like, cuddle. keep it on your belt in a Pokeball? Let's cuddle. And then when they, like, you know, they're, like, sleep on my, on my legs or whatever, I'm like, I can't go to sleep. Like, We're still talking about dogs, right? You, you throw the ball <laughs> at the dog, and it's gone. It's amazing. You're going to have to feed it eventually and take it outside eventually. Well, if no, it's comfortable in the thing, it's yeah. all taken care of. Yeah, you like go potty and then you throw the ball at it as soon as it goes potty and then you you suck back into energy. This is a great idea. It's a for me, I could see practical use. For you, yes. I still don't see it. Like for me, it'd be like okay, kids, we're going going up to the cabin, put them all in there, and With then kids, them, you put yes! your kids in there. It's comfortable. Your kids, are they would beast. be comfortable and they wouldn't complain the entire drive. Actually, that's a great idea. Road <laughs> trips would be so easy. They would be. In fact, I would. I also, this feels wrong. This would, feels like no, across no, no. the you just line. Put yourself in there and then just ship it. That's what I was going to say. Is like I'd actually be like, you know what? Put me in the pokeball. Let me know when we get there. What if no one ever lets you out, Joel? What if no one ever lets you that's out? A deep dark thought. Well, We're, no. Apparently, apparently, wild Pokemon and uh, certain Pokemon can break out of it, but it's just a lot of them are so worn down and tired and complacent they stay in there. Yeah, so which, I, could, I could break out if I wanted to. You, you hope? I, I hope feel like so. we crossed the line with the human trafficking part. We're not trafficking. <laughs> we, okay, at no point do we see human trafficking. You're carrying your kids there's, across state lines. There's my locations. kids that I'm taking to a different location. There's no trafficking Here's going the best. on. You'll go to a hotel and you'll be like, "There'll be like, uh, how many how many people are staying in this room? Uh, this is me and my wife. And then all of a sudden, you get to the room, you open the ball, and 28 kids. Trafficking, <laughs> verb, deal or trade in something illegal. <laughs> <laughs> no trafficking is going on. You'll we'll see. Maybe you run into some traffic. Okay. <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. So a Pokeball. Pokeball. Be on the 10th day. All right. 
On the ninth day of Bake It So Christmas, the listener gave to me an invisibility cloak Aww. from Harry Potter. You pervert. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You're just going to throw that out there like that? I, I think Jacob's projecting. I think a little bit. I was but, hoping Kim had picked it, honestly. That would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the funny thing is, I learned a lot about invisibility cloaks that I didn't know from reading the books of Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they're all there's a, there's a bunch of invisibility cloaks yes. in the Harry Potter universe, and they're all very rare and expensive. And may be spun from the pelts of the demiguys, magical herbivores that are found in the Far East. So that's right. Hmm. When you're wearing an invisibility, invisibility cloak, you're wearing murder, people. Whoa. It's the pelt of an animal. Wow. You're get red blood, red paint splashing you by people. And, and uh, what was the first invisibility cloak? Or who was it made by? Oh, I couldn't pronounce his name. And I didn't write it down. Death. But. It's death. No, it was Ingram Burden. No, Bung it was Bung. for Ing- Ignatus uh, Perver. Peverell, people That's are right. screaming at us right now, but it's made by death, as awesome. we saw in the Deathly Hallows. Yes, because it is. So that, that's what I was going to say. Is like the invisibility cloaks. There's a lot of them, but Harry's coat, Harry's coat of many colors. Uh, no, <laughs> Harry's cloak. <laughs> Harry has a cloak. But Harry's cloak is special in that it. A lot of the other invisibility cloaks, they'll lose their invisibility. They're they're subject to magical spells. I know it's the Harry's worst, right? Special. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like I got this knockoff one from Savers. Man, it it's like only got three two times. more uses on it, yeah. and it's done. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> but the two hundred quid. There's a hole in it, and so it's just like your knee is showing. Yeah. <laughs> but Harry's cloak will never fade or become damaged. Is that the original cloak that he has from Death? Yes. Oh, it is. Yes. Like the spoiler alert for the Harry Potter books, but yes, it's... They've been out for a while. It's one of the Hallows. Oh, yeah. I think I knew that. Yeah. But it's not completely impervious, meaning that apparently snakes can detect people under it. Cats, a Mad-Eye Moody's eye could see it. Dementors can apparently, since they only see emotions and not people, they can see through it. So it's not foolproof. But I just thought this would be great. Man, once again. What's, if, what's the practical the application? The practical use is when uh, my kids come running in the room first thing in the morning... And I just put the invisibility cloak over me so I can sleep a little longer and they bug my wife. <laughs> that's actually a great idea. That is, that's pretty good. That yeah. was a practical use I came up with. I'm like, I could do that. I am so proud of you for not being a pervert. <laughs> Thank you. Because that's, <laughs> that's really grown. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only place my mind went to well, being a pervert. But that's the problem. The problem with the power of invisibility. like It's we, a villainous power. Whenever we had our, our debates on flying versus teleporting back in the day. Mm-hmm. I never wanted to include flying or invisibility because invisibility is always see, always used for criminal purposes, yeah. stealing or getting into you know places you finding out gossip. Or, yeah, yeah. But and and it's voyeuristic, just sort yes. of like unavoidably. Yeah, yeah. But still, at the same time, I think I just get a kick out of it. Like I'd honestly go stand in front of a mirror, and just be like, well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and take it off and be like, Whoa, and then put it back on. Do you know so, what I would do? I would just go hang out at Maverick all day. <laughs> Why? Just to drink free soda and eat the candy and stuff like that. <laughs> Watch Remember, people. Maverick was my room of room of requirement back back when we uh, that's did that true. show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. I don't know. Can you guys think of any other practical uses for it though? Like I thought, just or like you know, you know, when someone comes and rings the door. I don't know if you guys have a big window in your front door. But when someone rings the doorbell yeah, and you're you on one look, side, you can't, yeah. yeah, and you want to see who it is, but you can't cross the room or else they'll see you. I put on a visibility cloak, check it, is, and be like, I'm not answering. It's a solicitor. And go back to my couch. Yeah, good call. So that's, that's another use I thought of, but I couldn't really think of many practical uses, but still, I just think it'd be cool to have. I think you're right, though. I think just taking naps without being disturbed would be great. Yeah. But then, of course, someone could trip over you or try and sit on the couch or, you know, jump on the bed and step on you. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. It would be. But yes. You- have we named any of these that you would want for Christmas? Hmm. So we have the diseases, the point of view gun. Uh, the dream machine, not diseases. The... The Pokeball and Pokeball. the Cloak. Pokeball. Yeah. Um, you could bring your mom from Missouri. I'd take the point of view gun. <laughs> you take the point of view gun? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Don't want to see your mom. Well, huh? I mean, I think in, in invisibility <laughs> How's cloak. How's he going to see but... her in invisibility cloak? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what am I going to do with it, really? I don't know. It's more of a novelty thing. Like, it feels, yeah. to me, it felt like it's kind of like a cool party trick. It's a party trick. trick. Exactly. Oh, man, you could do magic shows. Yes, you could. You could have a friend in the invisibility cloak helping you out. So, a magician. That would be my future. It's not far from where you're at now. <laughs> Burn? Uh, yeah, no, no. It was a compliment. <laughs> All right. All right. On the eighth day of Christmas, the listener gave to me a jetpack from the movie Rocketeer. Now you're talking. Right? Yeah. yeah. Except for, I think this one is the most dangerous one that we've mentioned so I'd far. Say second most dangerous. After yeah. what? After the dream After, machine. Well, later. Think, well, we mentioned so far. Never mind. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So the so the jetpack, right? 
I'd How rather cool get the jetpack than have, you know, we're sharing fluids, you know. We're not sharing fluids <laughs> and chemicals. I'm, Jake, I'm sure it's all very sterile. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing. I looked into the, you know, so, okay, I'll say this. So, so I, I mean, this would give, be the coolest thing ever because, okay, so from the movie The Rocketeer, he's not a superhero. 1990? 1991. Directed by Joe Johnson. He has to create, like, a... You know his own suit. He has a helmet. He has the rocket, and then just a baggy. It's pants. a very uh, it's like Iron Man. What's the word? Uh, '40s uh, deco art deco yes. look to it. It's like he's got the bomber jacket. He's got this really cool gold helmet. Yeah, with a fan. it was really cool looking. Yeah, when and, I was a get, kid. and then you get the silver jet pack. Yeah, and he, he looks so cool. At, and as you saw in the movie, the learning curve on this thing is really pretty tough. Yeah. And I so I feel like this one would be quite dangerous, a little unpredictable. But I'm once pretty you sure get it one down, of us would die. If all three of us got of it, got it, one of us would die within the hour. Well, here's the thing, though. So probably true. there is jetpack te- technology right now. Like you've seen a few YouTube videos where people can, you know, float for a while and they're attached to that mm-hmm. like weird tube or something like that. Yeah. On the water. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool. But they don't actually last for very long. And obviously you can't use these for transport. So they've made rocket belts now and they weigh about 100 pounds. And so these things do weigh you down, even though they have like jet fuel, essentially. Yeah. And and honestly, like some of them, they only stay in the air for 30 seconds. And they're hoping they can get them in the air for 19 minutes. And it's funny because there's this uh, company in Mex- Mexico called Technologi- Technologia Aerospacial Mexicana or Mexicana. Uh-huh. And they're making belts for 250000 And then this article says, or if you don't trust Mexican technology, <laughs> their competitor what? in Colorado is selling their version of the rocket belt for 155000 And I'm like, or it's just cheaper. It's $100,000 cheaper yeah, to buy yeah. their belt. But no, this... These things are real-ish? Well, and this was one where we had the James Bond jetpack on there for a little bit, but decided that the Rocketeer one was just cooler. Like, James Bond, it was was kind of this, you know, big, bulky kind of chair, basically, that he's flying around in. Why didn't you just want an Iron Man suit? Well, that was one we thought we kind of ruled out as too catch-all, too impractical. That's true. It is way too expensive. Because then you're you're just a superhero, right? (laughs) It's kind of out of my budget, unless there's a coupon. Also, I wouldn't get one. There might be. There's a little bit of risk with the buy with two the rocket get pack. one free. That would work, right? I I feel like to know how to be the only one in your neighborhood that knows how to use a jetpack that would be pretty cool. Yeah, uh, you'd probably crash a few times and not you know die. Skip I across guess. the water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Best part is though, if the rocket pack gets damaged, you just patch it up with chewing gum. <laughs> you see? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's so great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, look, it's flying. Flying would be great. It'd be nice to fly alone. I remember uh, I used to subscribe to, to Bad Magazine. Yeah. I loved Mad Magazine. And they had a Rocketeer parody there. And I'm, all I remember is that there was a scene of uh, Jennifer Connelly and after they got married. And she was bugged at the Rocketeer because the, she was doing the laundry and all the seats of his pants were burned off. And she was like, how am I supposed to keep these clean? Yeah. And I just thought, yeah, because the rocket's right there. Like, how does it not burn yeah. his clothes? Butt so, pads. Butt pads? Sure. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of butt pads, this has nothing to do with that. <laughs> On the seventh day of Pick It So Christmas, the listener gave to me a replicator from Star Trek. Now we're talking. Nerd. That's, that's right, Jacob. That's right, listener. We're talking Star Trek. Woohoo! This is the only time you're ever going to get it. Um, <laughs> so a replicator, if you don't know, because I didn't until I started doing research and I went, that would be pretty cool. A replicator is a machine roughly about the size of like a small ATM is what they said, is what uh, I was kind of looking up stuff. Yeah. And uh, Dave, my friend at work, uh, was telling me all about because he's a huge Trekkie. And he said it's about the, the visible portion is about the size of a briefcase, but the guts are like an ATM. And what it does is take molecules from around it and form them into whatever you want. So on the, on the ship, it's primarily used for food and water. Right. And, and what it does is. Uh, For example, it says here, to create a pork chop, the replicator would first form atoms of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, etc., and then arrange them into amino acids, proteins, and cells, and assemble the particles into the form of a pork chop. So much like a 3D printer, Mm -hmm. you just feed in blueprints to it, and then it gives you what you want. So I could say, you know, give me a chili verde burrito from Lorena's, and I'd put in the recipe. Or Earl Grey tea, hot. That's what uh, what Picard orders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. I know. I know things. No, well done. I know Star Trek things. Yeah. But it also can provide clothing. It can provide parts. Like, say, uh, like today I had my dishwasher, uh, the top uh, clip broke. And I was like, I'm going to have to order a part. And if I had the replicator, I'd just go up to it and say, I need this part. And it would give it to me. I'd probably not need it. So this sounds, it. sounds like a really, really fancy 3D printer. Yep. Yes, a very, very fancy 3D printer that makes things you can eat. Now, there are some limitations. It can't create uh, living organisms at all. 
mm-hmm. and it can't create like dark matter or uh, oh, something else. Although, make, make Kent a dog. Although, Joel, if I may, in the DRSA archive, uh, it actually says it's created living snakes. I like that you're getting a nerd voice on when and talking about Star Trek. The Allegiance aliens. When you're just geeking out about Pokeballs. The Allegiance aliens <laughs> were also able to create living things, and they created Jean-Luc Picard's imposter that with the replicator. But that was their technology, not our technology. Oh, okay. That was alien well, their technology. technology Get it together, better. Kent. Man, what a huge miss. Seriously. <laughs> So embarrassing. <laughs> Here's now, the thing, though. Here's what's great. You uh, put your dishes in the replicator. Yep. And it takes them. It takes them and turns them into energy. You could power your house. You could with eat dirty the dishes diapers later. And oh, dishes. my gosh. This is the best part so far. <laughs> Isn't this great? <laughs> yeah. It's like make some food. No. And, and, it, said here, back and it said here because uh, you can create uniforms or clothing and then every yard such as toys and souvenirs. Imagine Christmas morning with this thing. I didn't get what I want. <laughs> now you did. Booyah! I think I would just create food all the time. I'd be like, R&R barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm dead. Although some uh, gourmet and food co- gourmets and food connoisseurs have said that the synthesized material does taste a little different, but I don't think Elitist. most people will be able to f- figure it out, is what they said. This can also create breathable air, so in case you need like, a good air filter, this could work for that. So really, it, it's a very, very... I don't know. Okay. I, I, I don't I, I, Having not watched Star Trek The Next Generation, I don't understand how this was not used all the time just to make everyone on there just like blinged out and super rich. Well, that's part of the thing is they don't they don't care about that stuff anymore. They're evolved and they're in the future. They're so evolved Snobs. that they, they, they approach are. chairs from the back and they just lift. <laughs> they the lift right, one the right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I know yeah. things. I know Star Trek things. You do know Star Trek things. <laughs> Without watching. Yes. So, okay. Although I started okay. on the original series, which apparently in the original series they use like colored cubes. They ate those. And it wasn't until Next Generation that they came up with the replicator yeah. idea. All right, yeah. guys. A golden question. You can skip right to Next Generation. It's, it's Christmas morning. Yay! You, you, you get a replicator. Why am I here? What's the first thing <laughs> that you make with a replicator Christmas well, if it's morning? Cr- if it's Christmas morning... I'm going to go for like eggs, Benedict, biscuits and gravy, corned beef hash. Like, man, my, that's my, a big breakfast. Right oh, there. man. I, you well, want a big breakfast? If, oh, if I had a replicator, I'd be 300 pounds. Yeah, no, clearly. Because <laughs> that would be all the time. Don't stop there. Well, <laughs> I'd be 300 pounds. That's what Ken said. He's going to get R&R and be dead. Yes. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. 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 I, wouldn't, I wouldn't waste any time on food. I, I'd ask for like a ray gun instantly. Then I go outside and just shoot a ray gun. Why do you want a ray gun there, buddy? <laughs> it's going to be cool. A ray, a ray gun. Is he going to kill people? Kill people. <laughs> I'd ask for a Pokeball. Look, look, you he guys have it coming. You well, just want to eat capture, yourselves to death. No, he wants to capture and traffic dogs. You want to <laughs> shoot people with a ray gun. I don't want to shoot people. I just want a what ray gun. What are you going to shoot? The trees, The Joel. neighbor's dog? The trees. <laughs> You're going to shoot the Why trees. With a ray gun? Why do you hit the Heck earth, yeah. Jacob? Why do you hit the earth? Uh, Why what? are you burning down trees like that? Yeah. Uh, guy is a ray nice. gun. Who says ray gun, Jacob? <laughs> this isn't Missouri. Trees don't go on trees. <laughs> what? No tangents Look, on this. Episode. It's Christmas morning. I'm in Missouri. That's how that works. So nice. I have plenty no. of trees oh, to shoot at. Oh, I get it. Because he used to back in the day on your ranch. Uh-huh. He used to go out and get a shotgun or a rifle and mm-hmm. go shoot squirrels. That's true. But how is that related? Because you do that with a ray gun. Yeah, yeah. I shoot him with a ray gun. (laughs) (laughs) The light in his eyes. (laughs) See his eyes. I try not to. Uh, Jacob wants a ray gun for Christmas. Yikes. Look, what's the first thing you would get, Kent? Uh, It would be breakfast. A delicious breakfast. Seriously? Breakfast? Yes. It will make anything. What if it doesn't work a second time? Okay, Jake, it's morning and I'm hungry. Yeah, I was going to say, first thing this morning, I'm hungry. You can make your own breakfast. You can't go make a ray gun. I can't make (laughs) breakfast by pushing a button. You pretty much can. You don't even push a button. You talk to it. Oh, really? Yeah. Even better. It's basically Alexa. I want eggnog with about 80% uh, nog and 20% milk, please. And then it's Boom. like, it makes it for you. And then it goes, it's over. Right? No more. Yeah. No more replicator. And you're like, oh, that eggnog was I should have gotten the ray gun and so then, I can shoot sorry, the I got a freaking ray gun. <laughs> give, me a, give me an unregistered weapon, please. <laughs> Uh, we're learning can so I get much. a bayonet attached to my ray gun <laughs> just in case <laughs> uh, I'm well, worried now I think we're learning some things today fellas <laughs> but uh, why don't we move on on the sixth day of Bick and Sell Christmas the listener gave to me yeah, you got it down now a utility belt any from, utility belt? Oh, from do you have like hammers? Christmas. Oh. That's good. Thanks. So it's a utility Wait, hey, belt. Number six. Number six. But I thought you were a big Batman fan. I'm the biggest Batman fan because I've been because he has a replicator. All day. Yeah. 
No, here's the thing. <laughs> Making me hungry. There's not a lot of practical uses for a utility belt. And I think this is why Unless it doesn't Unless you're a crime fighter, yeah. Unless you're a crime fighter or you want to climb buildings. Because there's there's not a lot you can do. It's just owning the belt and everything that you can pack in those ten pouches. Well, let's just face the facts. So you can do nothing with it, and you still want it. Let's just face the facts that if we had a like, full smoke bomb Batman oh. costume, Ken would be wearing it right now. If I could wear a cape every day, I would. And a cowl? Yeah, oh, I'd wear a cowl too. No, I want people to know who I am. So I, I'm a little too <laughs> egotistical, I think. But a cape, yes. Jake, you should not be questioning this uh, belt because you can pack a ray gun in there if you want. Because Batman can pretty much pack anything. Batman doesn't this. have a ray can gun. Can I name some of the things he's put on? He's had it, on his belt? And I'll jump in there as well. <clears throat> so batarangs, bat lines, bolas, smoke pellets, tranquilizer guns, glue, a lockpick, the rebreather, laser, napalm, taser, and kryptonite. Oh, thank heaven I have this belt. Now I can carry glue around. It's glue globules, all right? Yeah. <laughs> also, <Come> on, glue. <laughs> EMP gun. Okay. Yeah, see, I knew that would get you. A grappling also gun. Also this, bat beacon. You want bats to swarm on your enemies? Yeah. Okay, bat beacon. That's <laughs> creepy. Freeze grenades. Okay, I'm in. See, I knew these these <laughs> harsh <laughs> things. The more violent they get. <laughs> yeah. I was better than glue. Practically, oh, oh, good. I have my Elmer's use. glue. I Although, always need that. No, think about this. You're, you know, I know I you don't even have scissors. Jake, you, got glue. I feel like we have to talk Jake into liking Christmas in this show. <laughs> yeah, apparently. So, Jake, Jacob, does it sell you to know that his buckle itself typically can, typically contains a miniature camera and a tape recorder? <laughs> no, that's freaking weird. <laughs> Does you know you know where I want a camera? Eyes up here. My belt buckle. <laughs> I just like that it's like it has a, a mini cape, a, a mini camera, and a tape recorder. I'm like, so a it's less than a phone. So he's using the cassette tape, <laughs> apparently, on his belt buckle. Yeah, this yeah. is a smart guy. Guys, he's a 77 year old character. <laughs> uh, here's here's the thing. So. I think most people would want a battering, right? You could almost say, I just want a battering for Christmas just to own an actual battering. I don't. I don't know what I'd do with that. What? Jake. You, oh, okay. So the guy who wants to go out and shoot things with a ray gun doesn't know what to do with a battering. Jake, you've played Arkham City. Remote control battering. Come on. All right. All right. You are, you are watching this and you are pestering people by having this float around. Or remote Jacob, control. Jacob, or remote can, control. Those squirrels. <laughs> Don't be weird. No way. No, no oh, one wants Joel, to kill don't be weird. Who wants to kill squirrels, man? That's just strange. Think about what we could do with the remote control battering. That would be awesome. By the way, you know what I found out while doing the research hmm. is that he had like the rope, but it was the one he had to throw. It wasn't until Tim Burton that they invented the grappling gun where it shot out the line. Yeah, I didn't know that. I thought that was part of Batman. And maybe it's just because you know I was younger and and uh, Batman and Batman and anime series came right around the same time. Right. But to me, it was always the grappling gun. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, look, if I could go like full superhero, which I don't think we're going to do because we discounted Iron Man there. But I would love the memory cape as well. Oh, because yeah. if you had the like the for, from example, for example, the Arkham games, if you had the grappling gun, mm -hmm. shoot to the top of a building and then float. Oh, man. That would be the greatest feeling in the world. It's yeah, the greatest cool. feeling in the world doing it on the, the PS4. <laughs> yes, it is. So imagine what it would be like in real life. But there's, you there's no cape building. here. So you'd only get to the top of the building and then have to take the stairs down. Or do that one. <laughs> do the so line walk. Like, do <laughs> suck. The utility belt, it's kind of a cop-out, but it would be amazing. It would be. Oh, and it can shock. If people try to take your belt away, it can shock them. Oh, well, no, you have glue, so it would just be glued to your body. <laughs> glue globules, which means those, Jake, those are explosives. I just want you to know. They're explosives? Yeah. Okay, this is yeah, more that's, interesting. That's you know the, the gel he puts on the wall and then blows it up in Arkham Asylum? Oh, yeah. That's, that's like the glue globule kind of stuff. It's the explosive gel. Okay. You can hurt people Why is it with called that? glue? Because it sticks. It's an explosive. <laughs> Anyway, why don't we just call it an explosive? <laughs> On the fifth day of uh, Big of Christmas, the listener gave to me a sonic screwdriver. Oh, boo! From Doctor Who. Boo! Yeah, I, why are we I, talking about Doctor Who on this show? I had no idea Ken <laughs> hated Doctor Who until I started trying to put this on the list, and he's like, I don't think it should be that high. Do we really need to include it? I don't know. Joel, do you like Doctor Who? I've never even watched it. I've just been a poser this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to my voice? <laughs> It changes um, all the time, too. Now, if you don't know what the sonic screwdriver is, it is kind of a all-purpose tool that the Doctor uses. It was first introduced back in 1968 with the second Doctor, and then the third and fourth used it a bunch, but they actually discontinued it when the fifth came around. It was written out of, series, out of the series, and when it was first used, it was literally a screwdriver. Like, he put it over a board with screws in it and push a button, and the screws would magically come up without it touching anything. Man, that's boring. It was a sonic screwdriver. Since that time, though, it uh, has Sonic been... Sonic meets sound, though, yeah. I, oh, so I've grown to hate this device. Because at the end of every episode, when the writers can't think of anything to do... Granted, I, I love Doctor Who. They'll use this as a deus ex machina where it will save the day every time. Mm -hmm. Well, and they actually... They, it, they, does, it does seem really unlike 
like formed, like framed, right. right? Like the sonic screwdriver so, can do, for example, this and that and that, but not well, that. They make it, they know? make up some stuff, but they actually they tried to they actually tried to use it less in the new series because they said they yeah. didn't want it to be a catch all, but it did end up getting that to that point. I, I do yeah. agree with that, but still having it. I don't mind it being a catch-all. So, for example, like if a door's locked, if your car's locked, you could use your sonic screwdriver. That's like the most basic one, right? Mm-hmm. Do you, you have could, a list of everything it's been used I for? I have a list of normal list things of and then weird things. So, you can crack codes. You can open doors. You can destroy Dalek crystals. <laughs> you can cut That's through handy. walls. That's handy, okay, actually. I did practical Dalek crystals uses. are the worst, right? <laughs> okay, did, you do practical. I then did I'll practical some of the most I did unlocking or locking a door, burning or cutting any kind of substance, uh, amplify sound waves, a flashlight, intercept and conduct teleportation, hack an ATM, a microphone, conducting medical scans, operate computers, provide geolocation. It's a GPS. Okay. Light candles, modification of a cell phone. phone. You can jailbreak a phone. Scan and classify matter, shatter glass, create an acoustic corridor for speaking with someone far away, and tighten and loosen screws. Also, <laughs> didn't see that coming. It is a screwdriver. It, it cured the cataracts of Henry VIII. It's melted ice. It, it, hold on, get this. It's it cured the cataracts <laughs> of Henry VIII. Yeah. It, like that's written down. It repels ghosts. Yes, oh it gosh. makes milkshakes. No, they're not really ghosts, though. Doctor Who doesn't really believe in ghosts. Right. So it, it dislodges and inserts teeth. And my favorite one, it removes dream crabs from your face, yeah. from Clara's face. It removed a dream crab. So it does that. Yeah. <laughs> but there are some limitations. It's not, it can't do everything. For example, it's unable to open a deadlock seal, which I, I, I always interpret it. It's not, but I always interpret it as, as a deadlock bolt. Like I always went, oh, okay. it, can do, it can unlock anything except for a deadlock bolt. And I'm like, what? Yeah, it's that not really bit, that. It's yeah. like alien technology. Also, it has issues with wood. That's a new thing. But apparently it, it deals with mechanisms moving and there's not a lot of mechanisms in like living stuff. It's not consistent. But imagine having this all purpose tool, Jacob, and being able to do all that stuff with it. Just with one thing. I'm like, still not sure besides healing Henry VIII's cataract what it's going to do. <laughs> Honestly, this is all I would use this for. Oh, it's a universal t- TV remote. I would watch TV. <laughs> oh, can I record That's this later? Good. That's good. <laughs> Yes. No, I could see it as like... like Good thing a, I don't have another device that would do that. I could, I could see it as a microphone using a microphone or amplifying sound waves or even just like fit, like a, my car breaks down, scanning it real quick and just going, oh, that's what's wrong with it. So I don't have to guess anymore. I don't just, you think you'd lose this in like a day? I actually have one. You know I have one that me, I got. Oh, yeah, that's right. Me too. I got one for... <laughs> me too. Wait, which doctor do you have? Uh, the 10th. You're the 10th doctor? Yeah. No, I have the 11th doctor. Oh, oh yeah. man, you guys are nerds. But uh, no, I, I got it for a Halloween costume. And it's still sitting on my desk at work. And uh, every now and then I'll just take it out and kind of scan something and flip it up and act like I know what I'm doing. But <laughs> And you just saved the day just by turning it on. I did. <laughs> so hey, there we go. My that's what you do at work. But what do you, what do, you do with a screwdriver? I don't know. Yeah. I've got bunions. Can you cure my bunions? <laughs> no, but I just... You know that, Jacob, you, you're a man of... Uh, yes. You're, you're a manly man sometimes. Um, he wants to kill things. You I mean, know that the right tool makes the job so much easier. Like if you have, that's what Ron Swanson tells me. Well, yeah, like Ron Swanson, I think he would love this thing. Actually, he might not because it's a little too uh, fancy. He likes old fashioned tools. Like, These glowing lights don't work for me. But I just, I know that like if I don't have the right tool, it's such it's such a hard job. But if I had, for example, if there's a screw up there, that I can't really reach. If I could just you know point it at it and get it out there underneath the sink is what I'm doing. But sounds like the replicator is a better choice. But this is higher, so it's more desired. That's what I'm saying. You got it backwards. All right. Well, maybe if you would have given some input this week, Jacob. (laughs) (laughs) Joel, you talked me into it. I also want a sonic screwdriver. Well, we're getting all these at the end. That's the the replicator. We can have everything. That's the Oprah twist right there at the end. (laughs) We get all these things. They're going to bring them in. My favorite things. Why did you become Southern? I don't know. (laughs) On the fourth day of Bacon Cell Christmas, the listener gave to me an amazing gift. I got... A hoverboard. Dun, 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 And not like a crappy hoverboard that explodes. Not a hoverboard. No, and that bugs me. I know. It bugs me that they call them <laughs> hoverboards. And I, my it's, a cheat and a, it's a cheat and a lie. My, I know. I, I didn't realize how adamant I was about this until the other day when my son... It I said, still bothers you? I said something about hoverboard and my son went, wait, do you mean hoverboard or hoverboard? Because I know you won't say hoverboard unless you mean a hoverboard. And I'm like, <laughs> hoverboard. Wow, I do talk about this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> was it last year? No, a year before when they were when they were a thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah Remember when we all knew how to ride hoverboards and we we drove around Ogden or well, drove we rode around Ogden. We rode around in, Ogden in a line. <laughs> yeah, single file. <laughs> yes. Oh man, we were cool. Yeah, good times. But, we're like seven feet tall. But uh, can you're talking about the one from Back to the Future Two? Yes, which is essentially a skateboard without wheels. Yes, exactly. Are you a skateboarder? I was when I was thirteen. 
I'm just trying to find like I know okay. I know my allure here is just it's cool. Yeah, actually, but that's, I was never that's a, a great question. I you know I I'm not super coordinated, and so I feel like I would get hurt. But this would inspire me to want to learn how to skateboard. Would you get the hot pink one? Oh, absolutely. I know. <laughs> I mean, what else do you get? Do, do they make them in any a, other you ones? You get a pit bull. Okay, so there are actually multiple brands. There's the No Tech series, the Rising Sun, the Question Mark, and the Pit Bull, as Joel mentioned. Can you tell us about the Pit Bull? Uh, it can go on water. It can go on water. The other, the hover other hoverboards can. cannot. Uh-huh. Keep it. I got a Pit Bull now. Hey, McFly, you bojo, those boards don't work on water. Those boards don't work on water <laughs> unless you got power. <laughs> yes. I'm so glad Joel's here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> bojo. Oh, man. <laughs> Seriously, there's an entire history about the hoverboard. So they're actually created in 2015 in this universe, in Back to the <laughs> Future the universe. Future, yeah. And uh, Mattel, they made pink and orange models with handlebars for young children. And then the, those were the aggressive boards, the no-tech rising sun, like we said. You need momentum by the rider. So you can't just, like, go on these and go wherever no, it's you like, want. It's literally like a skateboard you have to, where you, you got to push. Hmm. Yeah. And, yeah, so ice, water's not going to work, low traction surfaces, except for the pit bull, like we said. And there are places where you cannot hoverboard, much like yeah. no skateboard signs and, you know, like Hill Valley Courthouse. The, the best, one of the best things about this, though, is back when it came out in 1990, there was like an interview with Robert Zemeckis, the director, yeah. where he said, oh, they were real. It's just parents didn't want them to be manufactured and sold to kids because they thought they were too dangerous. And he said that in an interview and people went nuts. People thought this was real technology and that <laughs> this was all a big conspiracy by the parents or whatever. Right. And it just made me laugh that it, that people believed it. Like it was this is back before Internet checking. Yeah, but here's the thing. So in 2015, you remember how there were a lot of uh, fake video, the phony videos about the hoverboards were coming out. So yeah, yeah. Lexus tried to create this. And I don't know if they just made this fake campaign as well, but they did. Um, um, it, they did a proto- prototype hoverboard powered by liquid nitrogen cooled superconductors. And no, that was real. That was, it was real. real. And so you use magnetic levitation. And yeah, I, I think. But it was a very small surface it, and for a was. very short amount of time. Yeah. So it's in a skate park. And it wasn't like really dynamic. They were just kind of testing the, the hovering. Yeah. But that was about it. But so, yeah, I mean, Back to the Future was kind of right that in 2015 they were created. But I think that was almost, I think it was almost a self-fulfilling prophecy because they said it would be created by 2015. Yeah. I think a lot of companies were working towards that. But can I have a question for you? Sure. Do you really want that more than a utility belt or? Exactly. Like that's what I was going to say. One? Well, we got replicators, utility belts. Um, the, the oh, sonic screwdriver, pack. the jet packs, how did hoverboard we neither one of us are skaters. Why did we put this at number four? Because we saw this movie when we were children and we wanted it ever since. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, this think is a about dream it. come true. If we could have this. Yeah. And, and like, we're old, we're going to get hurt the first time we fall off that thing. I we're never going to want to ride it again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I had too much food from that replicator and I tipped over. <laughs> hey guys, if you had a replicator, you could get a hoverboard too. I don't think so. I think you're making yep. this the be all end all. Yeah, Jacob. And I feel like you're yeah. uh, you're going to overpower your. There's some limitations replicator. in Star Trek: Next Generation where they say you can't actually create technology from other franchises unless you have <laughs> alien uh, technology. Yeah. <laughs> so would you agree though? Like, does should this rank high? I put it high because you and I were both like, oh, hoverboard, definitely yeah. hoverboard. It's one of the go tos. Well, and I think this this also applies to real Christmas feelings. Sometimes it's not the gift that it will be the most useful to you. It's the one that you've always wanted. Yeah. And that's why it's exciting. Yeah. Do you know what I kind of want since I'm a little bit lazy? What? It's just a cool like chair that hovers. A, and hover, you could, ch- a hover chair. So you want to be as lazy as possible? <laughs> yeah. You want, you want the Wally world is what you want. Oh, no. What's happened? That's what you just said. Yeah. This, the, guys, <laughs> we're going to get real lazy and real fat. You're oh, like yes. a replicator and a Wally chair. <laughs> Please. Oh, Wally! Wall E World. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of Wally World from Vacation, and I was trying to figure out no, what the no. heck you were talking about. <laughs> you want a roller coaster? All right. On the third day of Bake It Till Christmas, the listener gave to me a time remote control from the movie Click, starring Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> and <laughs> that's all. That's all. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> no funny story. This is actually it was. This was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Makeup, and it's the really? only Adam Sandler film to be nominated for an Oscar. What makeup? He got older and fatter and then not fat. Like in the movie, as the movie progresses, mm. he gets older and older. And I guess that's, they get, got nominated, didn't win. But this is a universal remote control that does whatever remote, universal remote control does, but to time. So you can pause time, rewind time, fast forward time, slow motion time. You can skip over certain parts or you can um, in, like go to a foreign language. At one point, he uses it to interpret for some foreign clients. 
this is a pretty powerful yeah. tool. And, and I forget if you rewind time, are you just an observer or are you, are you literally like, say you go to Christmas when you were 10. Oh. Are you living that? Are you in the room? Confession? Yeah. I haven't seen the full movie. <laughs> Guess what? I saw it once. I don't remember a thing yeah, about it. I know. No. I saw it, but I can't remember Except the Except for Kate Beckinsale. I'm like, I think Christopher Walken. In a few costumes. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember. I've seen the ending. I know I've seen the last like half hour of the movie. but And I've seen the beginning. It's just that middle part that I'm like, I think I walked away from the show or was doing something else and wasn't paying attention. So I need to go back and watch it. But from what, I, what I've read here, it says you can revisit past memories and lower volume and free stuff. But also... The other thing is when you fast forward, your body goes into autopilot, meaning you're just kind of less responsive and just go through what you normally would do. Like, for example, every day at work, <clears throat> I just want this day to end, fast forward. Do what I'm normally going to do, fast forward through it. Yeah. But there are consequences, too. Like, he learns that by going through autopilot, his marriage suffers, his relationship with his dad suffers because he's not engaged with them. He's not interacting with them as much. He's just kind of, you know, isolated. Right. And also, he misses out on a lot of good experiences. Well, bad experiences, but it would have been good for for him. Good learning experiences. So this would be one where we would have to uh, be careful. Also, this remote uh, automatically learns your preferences and starts to do what you normally would do. So, for example, in the movie, when he goes into a coma, it automatically skips ahead to when he's going to wake up, for example. Right. And when he gets into an argument, it starts fast forwarding, even though he doesn't want it to because he wants to know what's going to go on. But the remote has learned by that point. It starts malfunctioning. But think about it. Like, say you go in for like a, this huge job interview and you're like, I'm so nervous and you blow it. Yeah. Oh, let's rewind that. Let's, let's try, try that, that again. again. Yeah. Also, for me, and this is maybe this just shows that I'm just tired all the time. Oh, no. Because <laughs> I'm the one that wants to rewind my, chair. My, my room of requirement was a uh, was a nap room where I could just go and take a nap. This, is, this makes a lot of sense. <laughs> this is exactly you, what this You'd use the cloak of invisibility there's for some, naps. There's some no, deep seriously. subconscious needs here. We should have Dr. Matt I, on this show. Maybe it's just because I've had sick kids the last couple of weeks, but I've not mm-hmm. gotten a good night's sleep. But I'm like, if I could just pause time and take a nap and just wake up when my body feels ready... Then I could be alert and awake at Bacon Silver recording instead of dragging like a heaven all night. Oh, I love that. That's a good idea. So that's what I would use it for primarily. Hey, do you um, want to take a nap after this? No, creep. Oh, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I think that the time remote control would give you a lot of power. And with great power comes a lot of drain on your power bill. <laughs> okay. Well that's said. Great. Well yeah, said. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I think Uncle Ben said that. On the second day of Bacon Cell Christmas, Ooh, second the listener day. gave to me... A lantern ring. A power ring. A power ring, if you will. From oh, the Green Lanterns. I've already got one of those, though. What? I, I got a replicator a long time ago, so I... Oh, that was one of the first no, things no, I No, 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 no. That is unworthy of you to create a power ring. Uh, uh, yeah, the replicator doesn't know. It has to choose you, Yeah, Jake. It did. Like Pikachu. <laughs> I wish you were there for the planning of this show. So I that really you do, Jake. You could have been there. <laughs> But it's the so, power ring can't go and explain where it's from and what well, it does. I hate to say where it's from because no, we'll go ahead and say the it. comics are very cool, but the movie's not super cool. The Green Lantern movie from 2011 starring Ryan Reynolds. That's not wait. That's not where it's. Well, I guess that is where it's from. I mean, yeah, look, we if we've yeah. seen it in a movie, yes. movies and TV, yes, I guess that makes sense. You could do it from the animated series, maybe. Right. Well, the comics. I mean, this the the power ring is amazing. It it kind of is. It's it's everything. And the more I read up on it, the more I'm like, how do they? limit this like this seems like an all-powerful like why did i not more know more about this when we were doing our superheroes bracket yeah i because i think he was in the hero bracket but remember yellow is his weakness yeah that's right Because they're green lantern yeah. and we all know that yellow has nothing to do with green even though it's one of the primary colors that creates green but okay let's go with so this. here's what i learned there's actually like a power charge it's almost like the iron man suit where if you use the power all the time and it's based on like your mental capacity mm-hmm. your willpower and the power of the ring and so if you say the whole slogan which is in brightest day in blackest night he's gonna do this again mm-hmm. he's done this three times on the show so far no evil shall escape my sight i don't remember the rest <laughs> <laughs> green lantern's light. let all who worship evil's might beware my power green lantern's light have I done that three times on the show? How about that? I probably have. We'll do it and again so, now just to be sure it's three. It's, <laughs> so when you say that, that's the amount of time it takes the ring, ring to charge a little bit mm-hmm. in order to do something. But you can do anything with this. If you saw the movie, you saw that he created It's some, kind of a replicator itself. A little bit. Kind of, except for you can't, you can't eat what it gives you. So. Yeah. Maybe you could. But I mean, you could create... Like automatically the ring puts a force field around you where you can travel through space or water yes. and at great speeds. And you can and already fly when you have the ring as when well. When you have the ring, you can fly, uh, which is also really cool. But right. it creates kind of uh, solid light constructs. So say, for example, I said, 
oh man, I don't have a saw to cut this wood in my backyard here in uh, Missouriville. Then you put the ring on, you got a saw. Joel, you're way off. There's plenty of saws, okay? There's saws everywhere. (laughs) Everywhere. In the film franchise, yes. But uh, And this one seemed really, really cool to have. It is. But apparently, like, early versions were shown being powerless against wooden objects. Really? Wood again? Yeah, apparently wood. It's sonic screwdrivers and... Oh, and and also, and so red and yellow are the weaknesses of uh, a ring carrier. It's cool. And also... Also, guys, this is a real morality tale because drugs and alcohol will also impair your use of the ring and not, not allow it to work. So stay clean, kids. Yeah. And your, your power ring will work for you. But here's, here's what it can do for you. So the force field, like you said, energy projection. Uh, the biggest one, which I think would be the coolest, is thoughts into projection. You could create anything. Whether it's, it's like only limited by your willpower. Yeah. So it's like, I want the Iron Giant to show up. Big, green, shiny Iron Giant, right? Yeah, everything's green. So you can't really say, like, I want to create a red dress. Yes, it'll be a green dress. Or is it is it blue and white or or is it gold and black? Don't bring up the dress. So um, also you can do playback. So you can do like environmental playback, kind of like we were saying with click Mm -hmm. where you could go back in time and just kind of watch something. My favorite thing was the energy twin. You could create an energy twin. So if you want, that's what you want the most. Yes. You could have someone go to work for you and they could be this (laughs) green, green light twin. And do your work, and you could just go hang out and with your sonic screwdriver and watch TV <laughs> on your hovering chair. <laughs> yeah, my hovering chair. <laughs> this show is saying a lot about us. <laughs> but the the thing about this one too is you have to be worthy to wear it, though. Yes, because uh, this is getting geeky, but whatever. Uh, I read that in the comics, Green Arrow, who's not Green Lantern, mm-hmm. he's Green Arrow. Uh, he used it real quickly just to do just to get a single arrow in his bow because he ran out and he had to use it against uh, Mysterio or something like that. And when he used it, he said that we're just mixing Sinestro. Yes. Sinestro. Oh, okay. Sorry, yes. you, I was the nerd rage. Sorry, Joel. Sorry, thank you for catching me on that. But he did one arrow and shot it at him, and it didn't even like hurt him that bad. But he said it felt like it took a week of sleep away from him. Like he felt like he hadn't slept for a week after using it just that once. And much like the hoverboard or anything that takes skill, the ring is the same thing. It really the power only works on your skill and willpower. So if you are if you have a lot of willpower, you can do anything. But if you're not really that motivated, it's not really going to work for you. So what you're saying is, as you're sitting there on your hovering chair <laughs> using a sonic All screwdriver right. to change the channel, okay, I dug a hole and digging R and R out of the replicator vent. <laughs> that you're the gonna vent? Pl- <laughs> just keep piling into my mouth. Well, it's gonna no, it's gonna spill out. Actually, uh, I'll use the I ring to make it. a slide, a slide for just ice cream. No, I ma- just pour into my mouth. I imagine that you'd already gotten a lot of R and R that spilled down to the vent in the front. You're just like picking it out Ew. of the vent. Is what I pictured. But R and R is a barbecue saying, place, by the way, and they're not a sponsor. <laughs> no, but they are really close to where we are, and they're they delicious. Should, should be, yeah. But uh, yeah, talk to him about that, Jacob. I will. Maybe I'll reach out. But and you're saying with that, you've got all the willpower in the world. Look, if I'm hungry, that's a lot of twin. willpower. <laughs> I'm hungry. You're not hungry. You have a replicator. Oh yeah. You're you're shoveling R and R barbecue into your mouth with a green slide. But I mean it. <laughs> A green uh. slide. That's all I care to do. <laughs> it's just like a, a food shovel. At least it's not green ice cream, too. Because isn't it weird that my mind goes here. to it's like, man, uh, the spoons are all dirty. I'd have to wash one. Nope, green spoon. <laughs> or just put it. In the you don't have to hold it. Just put it in the replicator. And get a clean one. <laughs> You're like green Captain Captain Crunch too. Yeah. No, you wouldn't yeah. eat. You would not eat the energy, Jake. You could. No, you couldn't. Yeah, you, you could. Eat the energy. Don't get I, crazy. I feel like if the ring was real, you could eat the, the craft it was making too. No. What? No. <laughs> It's, it, let, it does let off a low level of radiation. I should let you know yeah, that. Yeah, so don't eat the green Lucky Charms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. So there's our all the... the okay, so we went through the, the first 11. and But it was funny because when we came up with this idea, and maybe you can already guess where we're going, but there was one thing that both Kent and I went, oh, that's number one. There's one that everyone goes to. There wasn't to. even an argument about it. It was like, oh, that should be number one. Everything else kind of got tossed around, but that was the one that was like, this needs to be number one. So Kent, you want to say it at the same time? One, well, two, <laughs> three. Virtual reality machine from Lawnmower Man. <laughs> no? Yes, actually. <laughs> that's so okay. dumb. I, I was I only hated thinking, that movie so much. I was only thinking of Replicator, because that's what Jake's been saying all show. Oh, yeah, but it's not a Replicator. No, it's a lightsaber. A lightsaber? <laughs> it's a lightsaber. Speaking of VR, I got to actually play with a lightsaber in VR, which was super cool. Yeah, we all did. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> But no, a lightsaber. A lightsaber. A Who doesn't lightsaber. want a lightsaber? Everybody. If you haven't been yelling lightsaber, then you didn't want a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> 
say just one more thing that I've already got because uh, Replicator. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Why, why, no. Light, why is lightsaber oh, so no, 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 Jacob. You take it easy. No, 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 Jacob. If you could pick a you lightsaber of a hoverboard, which would you pick? Lightsaber. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because you cannot replicate kyber crystals, which are needed for each lightsaber. <laughs> oh, okay, I, dude, I've been doing that for like uh, years. Like that's old, old school. Jake, you're being crazy. Those By crystals way, are be- easy. I have like buckets full of them. Not not meth. Not crystal meth. <laughs> <Kyber> <laughs> <crystals>. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they're called. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but no, awesome. By the way, apparently, limestone. <laughs> apparently, kyber crystals uh, were also what you powered the Death Star. What gave it the laser to yeah. explode planets? Yeah. So there you go. Fun. Yeah. Fact. Jake's been using that forever too. Apparently, in his ray gun. I can get a ray gun on a Death Star. Star? Well, that's how it, that's how it works. See guys. you later, Alderon. <laughs> but these actually, uh, I mean, if you don't know what a lightsaber is, it's a it's a. Should they stop? Not sure. Joe, by uh, the way, that's... the look Joel just gave everyone who doesn't know <laughs> was so condescending. It was. <laughs> but I mean, it's so ubiquitous though. Like everyone sees it, they're like, "Oh, it's yeah. a lightsaber." Even if they never watched Star Wars, yeah, yeah, wait, yeah. So you did your noise. Do it. <laughs> Jacob, I want to hear your lightsaber noise. Mm, Come on, yeah. it's good for the show. All right. Uh, wow. Vroom, vroom. That's actually that. pretty good. Yeah. 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 It was more like a car, though, but okay. You said, you said vroom. Vroom. There you go. Yeah. All right. There it is. Uh, but apparently, that noise, uh, the sound effect, comes from a film projector and the interference uh, of a microphone being put behind a television. And yet, they put those two noises together and it created no, such it an iconic it, noise. It comes from a great sword of, of the Jedi of Order. Of energy swords. Yes. From kyber crystals. So here's the thing, Joel. This is number one, but this is kind of the dumbest one on the list. But it's that same mentality of it's not the Why practicality. Is it Jake, think about it. Okay, Jacob, once again, we all get a lightsaber right now in our hands. Woo-hoo! How long before one of us dismembers ourselves? And cauterizes the wound immediately. Look, we, we, we've got to okay. like, take Who, five steps back from each other, first of all. <laughs> who's the first one? I've got, who's one, the first I've got one? one by myself. Like, this is going to be cool. I'm going to cut a hole right through your window here. I'm going to point out something here. Uh, who in this room has cut themselves with a chainsaw? Raise your hand if you cut yourself with a chainsaw. <laughs> Anyone? Uh, Jacob! Hey, there he is! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, br- I burned myself on a chainsaw, but I've never cut myself on a chainsaw. I have never hurt myself with a lightsaber, so... But I just think there. I just think in regard to who's been uh, cut with something pretty deadly before, it'd be you. So yeah. once it, again, it just shows I'm tough. This is a weapon that requires discipline. And I mean, the force. Like, yeah. Ex- well, you you should have the force, but you, you don't necessarily need it. Well, because apparently the hilt is so heavy, but the light actual saber part has no weight, and so people don't have a good sense of where the blade is and end up killing themselves or hurting themselves mm. or singeing their hair. Yeah, so if you're force sensitive, if you're Jedi or Sith, you could use this. Uh, Kent, the uh, hilt is usually approximately 11 inches in length, and the energy blade is about three feet in length. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I, I needed to know those measurements. In case you want to build them. The tech specs. Thank you very much. <laughs> I actually have built a lightsaber in a way. What, at Disneyland? No, we, when we did CTR Wars for Divine Comedy, mm-hmm. we, we had to go in and frame by frame add in the lightsaber onto the plastic lightsaber that we were using in the oh, movie. Yeah? And so I've actually gone through the process. Not not as intense, obviously, oh, yeah, as them, that. but the rotoscoping process of just kind of drawing in the, the thing. And it was it was really painstaking to get those things to look good. Nowadays, they have much easier technology to make it look good. Guys, I have good news. You All have right. lightsabers for us? <laughs> Here we go. Oh, dang it. You get a lightsaber. You get, wait, what did have you, you actually seen those lightsabers? I'll give you my good news. Southern accent again? Here we go. So actually, there are like three hundred dollar lightsabers that I've I played with that actually have metal hilts, and once again, it's like glass or it's hard plastic. Yeah. But they make those sounds and, and they, they light up and, and they everything. light up like they go. And up. when you fight, they clash too. Zoom, zoom. <laughs> and it's it's so cool. So here's the thing, though. So that's what you bought us. If that's these cool. are if these are real, and they probably should be, and they probably will be at one. Joel's going to buy one now, uh, guys. This is literally on my phone right now. Ready. <laughs> He's married. What? We promise. Why? I've got a lightsaber. He has children. I have children. <laughs> They've never played that app. But <laughs> no, but here's the thing. Guys, like I'm a little worried about what we do, but also lightsabers have settings. Apparently there are like, for example, training ones. They have a non-lethal low power setting used for training. Look, so see, we're set. We'll, we're, we're, we're essentially young we on that. Yeah. And it would hurt us really bad. I would, just, I would keep stabbing you guys, and you'd be fine. Well, you'd probably kill us if you stabbed us, but uh, you wouldn't. It said, hopefully, you said wouldn't non-lethal. But you let's, said let's non-lethal. Bring to, let's bring this back to practical use, because obviously we're not going to use this to battle. So this then is then why used, would you use it just sword fight, right? What else is there? Yeah. No, no, no. You would use it for that too. But I mean, also, like I don't need a chainsaw use. anymore. I can also cut, burn, and melt through most substances. So jaws of life. We just use a lightsaber. No, no. I'm saying you can weld. Replaces the chainsaw. 
and welding tools. You yeah, can weld with yeah, this. Yeah, there it is. It'd be a lot easier that way. <laughs> it just seems <laughs> really like why you use a sword. If you're using that kind of power and technology, you need a sword to do that. I guess it looks cool. By it the way, looks the, amazing. The, the original lightsabers were actually made um, from uh, old cameras, the flash, uh, what, flash stem, flash something, hmm. uh, film prop hilts. That's what it said. But it's, yeah, oh, press camera flash battery packs. That's what they were. And I looked at a picture of them like, oh, yeah, like the side of the big cameras when they're like cheese and the big bulb goes off. Yeah. The side thing they're holding onto looks like a lightsaber. And they added some little doohickeys on there. Oh, that's cool. And the, originally they put reflective uh, tape or coating on them and thought that the lights would be enough to make them glow. And then when they saw the footage, they're like, oh, yeah, that looks pretty bad. So then oh, wow. they went in and rotoscoped, which means they drew on the glowing thing. I mean, what a great creation frame. in film, though. Like, amazing. It it's just a sword, but it's a glowy sword. It wasn't just him, though. Apparently, it's been found in a number of sci-fi works before George Lucas ever got it on film. Yeah, well, he stole a lot. Well, and he did say, like, actually, one of them. Who has um, right. Oh, shoot, which one was it? Uh, Analog, a Harry, a Harry Harrison story. George Lucas said, I read a lot of science fiction, and I read that one, and I saw this page on the back with a light sword and was inspired by that. Very cool. So he admits it. but So, so here's the thing. He did it. It's not who does well, it first. It's who goes. does it best. Yeah. Imagine you wake up Christmas morning. You see your, your sword hilt. And there's George Lucas. You pick this thing up. There's George Lucas. You pick up your sword, and what's the first thing you do? Kill him. You cut the tree in half. I mean, don't <laughs> no. you think like you cut the Christmas no, tree in half? You know what's going to happen, yeah, Kent? You do. It'll be like you get it out, you pick it up, you push the button, and it's facing the wrong way, and that thing's going right through your gut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh! That's the first thing. <laughs> Where's yeah. my sonic screwdriver? Fix but, things up there. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. Is this number one for you guys? Jake, is this number one for you? No. Replicator all the way. <laughs> you are obsessed with the replicator. It's amazing. Look, I've got a lightsaber and R&R. What else do you want? You're not getting a lightsaber. No, Jacob, remember the rule that you can't replicate stuff from other You franchises? just made up that rule. They make up all the rules. It's science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a replicator in our world. I make whatever I want. Show me in the next generation when they start making uh, a sonic screwdriver or a lightsaber in the replicator, and I will believe you. I'll write it. Fan fiction. It's in. <laughs> so would you say the lightsaber is one of the least practical totally. toys you could get? A like, hoverboard uh, is pretty impractical. Well, at least a hoverboard, it's like... It's a it's a toy that you can use. A lightsaber could kill you, and does yeah. that make it more practical? It's primarily or less practical. <laughs> <laughs> but when I thought about it, I'm like, yeah, it's got to be a lightsaber. Like I used to have this thing of, uh, you know, what would I do if if I had these powers in real life or, or mm-hmm. things in real life? Lightsabers, one, and I remember I was like, well, lightsaber and Wolverine's claws. If I had those, what would I do with them Shink. practically? Yeah. No, honestly, I win the most practical gift for sure. Like, what's more practical than Wait, that replicator? What do you mean you win? You didn't add my choice. Any, you didn't add anything to the list, Jacob. We gave that to you. I'm saying that's my choice. Look, <laughs> you said which one? That's why I win. It's the most practical. Here's the thing, Joel. He's right. He's right. Maybe we share our Christmas gifts with him, and we give him the replicator. Maybe we can give him one, and then I could get everything else. And, you guys, and everything, have. everything will just be little cubes that he has to eat. Yeah, and that's it. <laughs> little sugar cubes for our friend Jacob. Yeah. But Jacob, like we said, it's hmm. not about practicality. It's about what we've always wanted. It's true. This yeah. is about it's, Christmas. It's, it's gifts. Oh, thank you, Jacob. Bring, tying it in. It's all about Christmas. It's all about Christmas, everyone. And that's what we wanted to say today. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Got <laughs> a great everyone. ending, I guess. <laughs> well, because really, this is only going to be our only Christmas show because yes. next week is going to be a look back. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we're on break until January. Yes, we are. So kind of funny. But let us know what you would like to see from film or TV underneath your Christmas tree. Please keep it practical like it could actually fit in your living room. Once again, we're not yes. going for like, you know, Serenity or the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Let's let's keep it, you know, in that level. But uh, let us know on fake on our Facebook page or on Twitter what you want, what what gifts we may have missed out on. Yeah, for example, I really wanted the I wanted Sting from the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings series. Why did you want not it the, again? Not the musician? <laughs> <laughs> not the musician who was in Dune. I was like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> but it's a sword that when you're in the movie, it's when orcs come by. But when your enemies come by, the sword will glow blue. And so I would love that to keep it by my front door. And if solicitors came to the door, or like home teachers or something like that. <laughs> they're, wait, they're not solicitors. <laughs> you, it would glow blue and you didn't have to answer the door. <laughs> Like, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> I think that would be pretty fun. <laughs> There's something a replicator can't do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Magic. Was it made one? And then other ones I was going to say, I actually had the Neuralizer from Men in Black, and I realized pretty quickly I didn't really know how to use that one in an ethical way. And a Proton Pack from <laughs> Ghostbusters, no practical use for that, but still pretty cool. But yeah, let us know what you thought. 
And if you want to find me, you can find me at 786Joel on Twitter, or you can find me performing with the Quickwits. They perform every Saturday night at the Midbill Performing Arts Center. For more details, go to qwcomedy.com or go to the Quickwits Facebook page. If you want to find me on Twitter and Instagram, it's at Kenny3DD. If you want to read my movie reviews, especially Star Wars coming out soon, it's ShowtimeShowdown.com. If you want to find me saying very little on Twitter, it's uh, Jacob A. Rogers. You can also find Bacon Sale on Twitter at Bacon Sale, where a lot is said. Uh, also go to Bacon Sale's Facebook page and the store uh, that we've been mentioning. So tpublic.com slash Bacon Sale. And gentlemen, if you join me in this uh, final song. Ready? Three, two, one. For, For Bacon Sale Christmas, the listener gave to me 12 Dream Devices, 11 Point of View Guns, 10 Pokeball Types, 9 Cloaks from Harry, 8 Sci Fi Jetpacks, 7 Replicators, 6 Batman Gadgets, 5, five Sonic Screwdrivers, 4 Hoverboards. <laughs> No, <laughs> three remote, two lantern rings, and, and a saber of light for us three. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Do we all sound pretty loud, or do you guys feel Hello. I sound like I have a cold. A cold. Come Let's on, go. Joel. Let's get loud. Let's get loud. Hey. Hey. Ha ha. They were all me. So you're going to kind of get drugs for Christmas. <laughs> Hashtag pervicant. This is sucking so far, just so you know. I'm in my house, although it's not my house. It's Kent's house. But it's not Kent's house because Kent is the prince of Narnia. <laughs> oh. If those two could just shoot each yeah. other with this gun, I think they'd yeah. really start to get along. That would kill our show, so you know. <laughs> Ow! We're going to have to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> this is a billion dollar Out of context, day, that sounded really weird, Kent. Silence! I choose you! <laughs> Put me in the Pokeball. Let me know when we get there. What if no one ever lets you out, Joel? What if no one ever lets you That's out? That's a deep, dark thought. You pervert. You're just going to throw that out there like that? I, I think Jacob's projecting. I think a little bit. I am so proud of you for not being a pervert. I know Star Trek things. You do know Star Trek things <laughs> without watching. I don't want to shoot people. It's one of what are you going to shoot? The, the trees, the Joel. The trees. <laughs> You're going to shoot the Why trees. With a ray gun? Why do you hit the Heck earth, yeah. Jacob? Why do you hit the earth? But how is that related? Because you, you know the ray gun. Yeah, yeah. I shoot him with a ray gun. If I could wear a cape every day, I would. Oh, thank heaven. I have this belt. Now I can carry glue around. It's glue globules. All right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know where I want a camera? Eyes up here. <laughs> My belt buckle. <laughs> I don't think it should be that high. Do we really need to include it? I don't know. Joe, do you like Dr. Who? I've never even watched it. I've just been a poser this whole time. It cured the cataracts of Henry VIII, and it removes dream crabs from your face. Aww. Oh, yeah. man, you guys are nerds. Those boys don't work on water <laughs> unless you got power! Yes. <laughs> I really must go. Baby, it's cold outside. My tummy says no. Then you probably should go to the bathroom. <laughs> you have IBS. <laughs> I'm taking medication. I'm gonna be quite a while. <laughs> this will be quite a song. If I win Clash of Clans, I'll smile. And I really can't stay, because you got forgot to turn on the fam. <laughs> Please light a match. We can just keep going with this. <laughs> this is being recorded. Say, right? what did you just hatch? <laughs> Next episode of Bacon Sale. Making up Christmas music. <laughs> We're putting tunes of Christmas songs to IBS. Jingle right. bowels, jingle bowels, wow. jingle all the way.